Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with chocolate truffles. That's right, for this year's edible gift idea, I decided to go with this all-time classic confection. And if you've never made homemade truffles before, these are way easier than you think and really do make for an impressive gift. And by the way, I ended up doing a very holiday-ish gingerbread spice version here, which is what chefs call pumpkin spice when we don't want to be made fun of. But please note, this method will work no matter how you want to flavor your truffles. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by adding some dark chocolate chips to this bowl. And in case you're keeping score at home, this chocolate is 63% cacao, which I only mention because I really enjoy saying cacao. And as far as amounts go, this is exactly 326 grams, or just slightly under. And the reason knowing the exact weight is so important is because we want to add exactly 60% of that weight in cream. So we'll enter 326 grams of chocolate and then multiply that by 60%, which of course is 0 0.60, which means if we round up, we need 196 grams of cream. So we'll go ahead and place our pan on the scale and zero it out. And then we will simply pour in the cream until we have exactly how much we want. And what's great about this method is you can start with any amount of chocolate and then using this simple calculation, you'll know exactly how much cream you have to add in. Okay, so take that, people who say math is never fun. Sometimes it's fun, and this is one of those times. And that's it, once our cream has been weighed out, we will head to the stove and place that on medium heat. Because before we pour this over the chocolate, we wanna heat this up until it just begins to simmer, which is probably gonna take a couple minutes. And if we wanna multitask while we're waiting, we can go ahead and add whatever flavorings we want to our chocolate, which for me is gonna be some ground ginger, some cinnamon, a pinch of freshly ground black pepper. And instead of just eyeing it, I want exactly a pinch, which is why I'm using this freakishly small measuring spoon set to get exactly one pinch. And then last but not least, we'll give it two small shakes of cayenne. Oh, and like I mentioned earlier, if you're not into these flavorings, you just go ahead and add the ones you are into. I mean, you are after all the ganache of your ganache, which by the way is what this mixture we're about to make is called. And at this point, we'll head back to the stove to check our cream which we want to pull off the heat as soon as it starts to simmer, which is exactly what mine was doing here. And then once that does happen, we'll go ahead and quickly and carefully pour that over our chocolate. And then we'll give the bowl the old shake a shake -a. Although that really was more of a swirl. And then what we'll do is let this sit for exactly two minutes, which will be just enough time for that chocolate to melt into that hot cream. And then after two minutes, we'll go ahead and grab a whisk and we will carefully start stirring so as not to splash any of that cream out of the bowl. And when we first start doing this, it's not gonna look good. In fact, it's gonna look like something's gone tragically wrong, but it hasn't. Just keep whisking, and in just about a minute or so, it will turn into one of the most beautiful sights in all the culinary world. And if everything's gone according to plan, you're gonna end up with a very thick, very glossy, what we call in the business a chocolate ganache, which I think we'd all agree has a lot of panache. And whenever I do this, I get a little bit sad, knowing that there's people walking this earth that will never ever experience this transformation themselves. Okay, do not be that person. And then what we'll do once that's set is take a spatula and clean the sides of our bowl, at which point we're gonna cover this and let it sit out at room temp until it's firm enough to scoop. And yes, you can pop this in the fridge to firm it up quicker, but sometimes that makes it too firm and it won't be quite as easy to scoop. But anyway, suit yourself. And since my kitchen was freezing, I just left mine out. And that's it, once firm, we can go ahead and scoop out whatever size portions we want. And for this, I like using a sorbet scoop, which gives me about one tablespoon per portion. And then to get these really smooth, we generally wanna give them a little roll between our hands, which is a little hard at this point because they still are a little bit sticky. So once scooped, I do like to pop them in the fridge for about 15 minutes, just to firm them up. And then we will pull those out and give them a quick roll in our hands to smooth them out. And by the way, I will say this step is technically optional because once you coat these in the chocolate, which is our next step, that coating will generally hide any flaws. Oh, and I should mention, usually we want damp hands when we roll things, but this time, no. Okay, in this case, dry hands make smooth balls. But anyway, we'll go ahead and give those a roll, at which point they are now ready to coat in melted chocolate. So we'll head back to the stove where I have a bowl placed over hot water which has been placed over the lowest heat setting you have. And then into that, we're gonna add a couple cups of chocolate, but not all at once. 
right? We're going to reserve about a quarter to a third of a cup to add later. But anyway, what we'll do is just let that sit and melt, which is going to take a few minutes. And while I was waiting, I went ahead and grabbed a nice crispy ginger snap and my microplane. Because what I'm going to do after I dip my truffles is grate a little bit of this over the top, which is not only going to taste nice, but it's also kind of sort of going to look like gold dust. But anyway, let's go back and check our chocolate, which is now pretty much melted, so we'll go ahead and give it a stir. And then to finish our coating chocolate, what we'll do is go ahead and dump in the rest of those reserved chips, which again was like a quarter to a third of a cup or so. And we will stir those in. And just as soon as those disappear, this chocolate's ready to use. And by the way, I believe this technique is called seeding, S-E-E-D-I-N-G. And what it does is temper the chocolate so that once it cools and dries, we end up with a texture that's nice and firm and crisp. Oh, and as we dip these, I do like to keep the chocolate on top of the hot water so it doesn't cool down and get too thick. And there are lots of methods for doing this, with the bare fingers being the most basic. Oh, and there shouldn't be any chocolate on the silpat. I'm not sure what happened there. But anyway, we'll go ahead and dip these in chocolate. And then we'll let most of the excess drip off. Although I was a little bit impatient with this one. And as these get placed onto the pan, I like to take my finger and give the top a little bit of a swirl, just to give that top a little more visual interest. Speaking of which, while these are still nice and wet, I'm going to go ahead and grate over some of my ginger snap to create that gold dust effect I mentioned earlier. And again, that's just because of the flavor truffle I'm making. All right, if you're doing a coffee truffle, you would use some ground coffee. Or for an almond truffle, you'd do some sliced almonds. Or a citrus flavored truffle, you'd do some candied peel. All right, so you get the idea. Oh, and if you're not into having chocolate all over your fingers, let me show you the alternative fork and spoon method, which is not quite as fun, but is neater. And all we do is simply hold that truffle with our fork and spoon copious amounts of the chocolate over with the spoon. And then after letting the excess run off, we'll go ahead and transfer that onto the pan. And then even with that method, I do like to give the top a swirl. But of course, swirling tops is your business. And once that was done, I went ahead and dipped the rest. And for the record, this recipe is going to make about 18. But I only did 12 in the dark chocolate, because I wanted to try to dip a few in white chocolate, which you will see later. And then, very important, once our truffles have been dipped in chocolate and decorated, we have to let them sit out to cool and dry until that outer layer of pure chocolate hardens completely. So there's not much to do for the next hour or so, except wait. Although, if you want, once these are partially firm, you can trace around the base with the back of a knife, not the blade, the back. Otherwise, you're going to cut your silicone mat. But if you were kind of messy doing these like I was, by going around the base with the back of a knife like this, once these are fully hardened, we can lift them off the silpat, and they will have a nice, clean bottom edge. So this is optional, but it does give them a little more professional look. But regardless of whether you trim the bottoms or not, we have to let these sit until that chocolate hardens completely. At which point it should really sound like this if you tap it with a metal spatula. So mission accomplished. And these are now ready to grab for the official taste. And what makes for a proper truffle is the magical combination of that semi-soft, luxurious ganache inside, covered with that hard, crisp, pure chocolate shell. Okay, so it's contrasting textures that really makes a truffle what it is. And yes, you can refrigerate these, and the texture will get firmer. But even at room temp, that ganache inside should be firm enough to hold a tooth mark. Which for me personally, is the visual sign your ganache is perfect. And of course, you can just go ahead and eat all these yourself. Or in keeping with our annual edible gift theme, you could pop a few in a nice looking box, or a box like this, and give that to the chocolate lover on your gift list which I predict will be greatly appreciated. Oh, and as I mentioned earlier, I did save some so I could try them dipped in white chocolate, which I thought would make a nice presentation mixed with the dark. Except, because white chocolate is so much sweeter, I don't think it worked quite as well with those spices we used. Okay, especially the cinnamon, which gives this more of a sweeter profile. Although I have to admit they did look nice, with those beautiful contrasting colors. But anyway, no matter how you coat these, or what exactly you flavor these with, I really do hope you give them a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.